Hello everybody, welcome to Dak Man Productions and welcome to Conahay Rail. It's been a while since I've done a switching video, so this time we're going to do uh, a little bit of switching at a facility called Crystal Ice on Conahay Rail. This is where a facility is located and it's actually, uh, I actually had a facility named just that Crystal Ice right here in my town. And when I was a kid, I remember you couldn't even get ice in a store. You actually showed up to this ice house and you got ice for your party. <laughs> so, and then uh, ice got sold in stores afterwards and then you didn't go direct to the ice manufacturer to pick it up. But anyway, any rate, so Crystal Ice on Conahay Rail, pretty much like what happened in my town years ago when I was a kid. They make the ice, they package it in the bags, load it up on rail cars. And the rail cars take it to the uh, transfer facilities or warehouses, wherever have you, so they can be loaded on trucks and shipped to the stores. So that's kind of like the um, operations behind Crystal Ice on Conahay Rail. So for that, we need refrigerator cars. And so we'll be uh, swapping out a couple refrigerator cars. Only two cars can fit in there at one time, but you'll see what's going on here in a moment. Near the midpoint of the video, I will talk about the real refrigerated rail cars and a little bit of history behind them. So if you want to learn a little bit of history behind the refrigerated rail cars being used in the United States, well, you might want to stay tuned to this video. <laughs> so, let's get started and I'll show you our task for today. So, here we are uh, on Conahay Rail in the other section. And back here is Crystal Ice. So, you'll see those. there are already two Pacific Fruit Express refrigerator cars. These are 57 foot mechanical refrigerator cars. We'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video, the differences and what that means. These are made by Lionel. So we're going to switch them out from Crystal Ice, uh, borrowing the Farmingdale Junction X Conrail locomotive. And then we have to, uh, you can see that two empties are already dropped off. Let's get started. Dispatcher here, do you copy? Over. Roger that. Please start up and stand by. Copy that, dispatcher. Starting up the engine. Out.
I hope you enjoyed the switching operations at Crystal Ice on Conahay Rail. So let's talk a little bit about refrigerator cars, also known as reefer cars. And uh, so if you want to learn a little bit more about reefer cars, stay tuned. So first, let's discuss the word reefer. A refrigerated car, also known as a reefer, is a refrigerated box car, basically. A piece of rolling stock designed to carry perishable freight at a specific temperature. Refrigerator cars differ from simple insulated box cars and ventilated box cars, which were commonly used for transporting fruit, but neither of those are fitted with cooling apparatus. There's a variety of ways that refrigerated cars can cool the product inside of them. Some of them were ice cooled, some of them were mechanically driven, some even using carbon dioxide or dry ice in a liquid form. Milk cars and other types of express reefers may or may not include a cooling system, but were equipped with high speed trucks or other modifications that would allow them to travel with passenger trains. Anheuser-Busch was one of the first companies to transport beer nationwide using railroad refrigerated cars. In 1907, the Pacific Fruit Express began operations with no more than 6,000 refrigerated cars. By 1913, the number of thermally insulated rail cars had topped 100,000. In 1920, the Fruit Growers Express, or FGE, a former subsidiary of Armour Refrigerator Line, was formed using 4,280 reefers acquired from Armour and Company. In 1923, FGE and the Great Northern Railway formed the Western Fruit Express, also known as WFE, in order to compete with the PFE, Pacific Fruit Express and the Santa Fe Refrigerator Dispatch in the West. In 1926, the FGE expanded its service into the Pacific Northwest and Midwest through the WFE and the Burlington Refrigerator Express Company, its other partly owned subsidiary. FGE purchased 2,676 reefers from the Pennsylvania Railroad. In 1928, the FGE formed the National Car Company as a subsidiary to service the meat transportation mark. Customers included Combs, Oscar Mayer, and Rath. By 1930, the number of refrigerated cars in the United States reached its maximum of 183,000 cars. By 1934, the Interstate Commerce Commission Regulations number 201 came into effect, banning billboard advertisements on freight cars. In 1936, the first all-steel reefers entered service. Now both the steel reefer and the woodside reefer used ice to keep the product inside cool. The ice would be loaded into top hatches. By 1950, the U.S. refrigerator car roster dropped to 127,200 rail cars. By 1957, the last ice bunker refrigerator cars were built. In 1958, the first mechanical reefer utilizing diesel-powered refrigerator units entered revenue service. So these did not use ice to cool the product inside. Instead, they had a diesel engine and since I'm a diesel tech I can tell you that they used a Detroit two-stroke diesel engine on these things and the diesel engine compartment was in the side here now this is a Lionel piece uh, this is uh, pretty accurate it shows the diesel unit in here the door actually slides to show the engine this is a scale sized Lionel 57 foot refrigerator car. Weaver also made one as well. Uh, pretty much the same thing with the uh, engine with the sliding door. Lionel did buy those Weaver molds and are making them as the Lion Scale refrigerator cars. 
1959, the flush plug style sliding door was introduced as an option, providing a larger door to ease loading and unloading. 1971, the last ice cooled reefers were retired. In 1980, the U.S. refrigerator car roster dropped to 80,000 rail cars, and that's because the uh, trucking industry basically took that away from the railroads. It became uh, more popular, more economical, and uh, they were the trucks were better at cooling than rail cars were. In the 1990s, the first cryogenically cooled reefers entered service. However, by the year 2001, the number of refrigerated cars in the United States bottomed out at approximately to 8,000 units. In 2005, the number of reefers in the United States starts to climb back up to approximately 25,000 units due to significant new refrigerator car orders. And that's because the refrigerator cars were basically redesigned. They no longer used a mechanical engine inside of the car. Uh, instead, they used a... Uh, self mounting unit on the end of a car much like a truck trailer reefer and those were uh, produced by Trinity the Trincool reefer cars they were available in 65 foot and 72 foot and basically Trinity Rail changed and improved upon the uh, refrigerator cars making them more economical and uh, a lot more reliable to uh, transport frozen and refrigerated products. In 2006, RailX launches a 55 car unit reefer train service between the US West Coast and New York. Now, there was a fan or a viewer, I forget who it was, told me that. At that time, Union Pacific was uh, actually pulling that 55-car unit train. I'm not sure today if that train still exists or if it's still pulled by Union Pacific. But I'm sure one of the viewers or subscribers out there will tell me. More on an interesting note, Lionel did introduce a reefer car unit train. It was called the Lionel Southern Pacific Salad Bowl Express Set. And the story goes like this. Southern Pacific Salad Bowl Express rushed produce from the San Juan Quinton Valley to all of America. And the Lionel set captured the look of that famous train. It's led by a legacy SD40R capturing the unique details of number 7350 following a rebuild in a Sacramento shop. The set included four Lion Scale Pacific Fruit Express reefers. Those are the X Weaver molds that I was talking to you earlier about in this video. Two of the reefer schemes were available only in that set and not separately. The final car has a working EOT. Lionel did release Lion Scale reefers separately to go with this set. The Lion Scale cars are made in the US with imported parts, and the decoration and the final assembly at the Lionel headquarters in Concord, North Carolina. They feature die cast metal trucks, operating couplers, and rotating wheel bearing caps. And since they were Made on the old weaver molds, they were easy to convert to scale couplers and two rail wheel sets. That set was announced in the 2017 Lionel Signature Catalog. So I hope you had fun learning about the refrigerated rail cars. Hope you learned a little bit of history about them. And if you're the type of person who likes to run prototypical, that information would be helpful to you as the proper time period. If you're the type of person who likes to run pretty typical. If you're uh, running just for fun, then yeah, that's fine too. Uh, reefer cars are always lots of fun, especially the billboard ones. So, we'll catch you guys real side. Goodbye.